Hey everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed our story, The Great Eggscape, which is such a fun and delightful tale about eggs and the fun that they have, especially this time of year with everybody doing Easter egg hunts and dying Easter eggs and um, making delicious um, deviled eggs or pickled eggs. So I thought we could do some crafts that go along with that whole idea. So I came up with actually three different crafts that kids of all ages can enjoy. We've got um, our Cheeky Chester Chicken, which is a good craft for um, younger kids to do in um, between you know preschool and early elementary. And then we've got a really simple craft. We've got Suncatcher Easter Eggs. And this would be really good for really young kids to do, preschoolers, but anybody can do them too because they really turned out really cute. And they look beautiful hanging in the window with the sun shining through them. And then a little bit more complicated craft, but definitely worth the extra effort, are these adorable little Easter egg bunnies that we can make. And so in this video, we're going to show you guys how to do all three of these crafts. And because the debate always is which came first, the chicken or the egg, I thought we would start with our chicken. So let's go ahead and get started. To make our chicken craft, um, you're going to need a few items. And if you are able to come down to the Herb Memorial Library, we will have a craft kit for you that has everything except for the glue and paint inside of it, um, including the directions on how to do this craft. If you can't come down to the library, that's okay too. You can uh, make most of these crafts, the things that you have around your home. And to make our Chester chicken, you need to have these adorable little mini popsicle sticks. I think these things are so cute. Um, they're little mini craft sticks. You can pick them up at any of your big box stores. Um, or just take a regular popsicle stick and trim off the lower part of it and um, you'll end up with your four popsicle sticks. You're going to need a pair of googly eyes or a marker to make eyes if you don't have them. I found these colored eyes. I thought they gave our chicken just a little bit more personality, but just plain um, black and white eyes are fine too. You're going to need a thin strip of cardboard. You can cut up a little piece of cereal box or a manila folder, um, whatever you need for that. You're going to need a small square of orange construction paper and a yellow rectangle of yellow construction paper or cardstock. You're also going to need yellow paint and you're going to need some glue and scissors and a paintbrush. So the first thing you need to do to get started is to take your cardboard piece and you want to glue your popsicle sticks onto it. This is what gives your stick stability and helps them stick to each other. And if you, you know, didn't measure right or um, your popsicle sticks don't fit, you can always turn it or trim your popsicle, your uh, cardboard so that it fits securely. And just glue them all together on the back like so. Um, and then press down nice and hard. The idea is to, to create a backing for your sticks just like that. And then we'll flip that over and you're going to want to let that dry. When it's dry, you want to take your paint and you just want to put a little bit on here. You don't need a lot. And you just want to paint all of the popsicle sticks. Now, as you can see, since I didn't let it dry, it kind of fell apart, which is why you need to let it dry. Um, but then just paint all your popsicle sticks and you want to make sure you get all the way around and on the edges. And when it is dry, it's going to look like this. I'm going to move this one out of the way here. It'll look like that and um, this is going to be the body of your chicken at this point you need to take your pencil and we're going to go ahead and while it's drying we're going to cut out our feet and our beak and you just need to draw on your orange square something that looks like a giant three-toed foot maybe like a funny tree like that and then you can just fold it in half those are all about symmetry here. And then you can cut it out. That way your two feet will be identical. And we've got some examples of those already done. So we've got our feet already cut out. And then we've also got to cut out a beak. And so out of the fold here, oh, somebody's phone's going off. Um, you need to cut a triangle out right along the fold. So that creates a diamond-like beak shape, which is what we also have right here. Those are the feet and the beak. Now how do we do the wings and the crest? Well that's also simple to do. With your rectangle we want you to cut off just the top part of it and then you can either draw out 
your wings if you look like a giant leaf like shape you can kind of make that even a little bit more square if you want and then again fold it in half and cut it out once and you'll get two and you'll end up with two um, wings and then we also went ahead and we just fringe cut right along the edges there to give it an actual feathered appearance we did that for both of them and then for the crest part here again too you just kind of want to draw kind of a little more outlandish kind of thing like that and then when you cut that out you want to be sure that you fringe that as well to give it a feathered appearance and that's how you want to draw that crest as well now we get to assemble it all at this point your bird should be nice and dry your stick should be dry and so we're going to turn them over and you're going to put a little bit of glue here at the bottom where you're going to put his feet and that's why you want to make sure his legs stay a little bit long because we want just his toes peeking out from underneath the sticks so we're going to put a foot here and a foot here and we're going to go ahead and add the crest at the top here and so that's going to go like this again we want to get just the feather sticking out on top and then we're going to go ahead and add the wings here and you can go ahead and make sure that they're pointing down a little bit down and away from his body and same with this one and then turn it over to make sure that that's how you want it to look if it looks great you can leave it and let him dry or you can adjust them as you see fit again once he's dry all we have to add now are his eyes and you can glue these a little off centered it gives them kind of a silly crazy goofy kind of chicken like appearance with these gigantic eyes and then we want to put his um, beak on underneath you want to put just a little bit of glue there and then glue his beak on and then just let them completely dry and there you have our cheeky chester chicken and everyone's going to be a little bit different because you're all going to make your wings a little bit different and your feet a little bit different shapes you make them big and chunky you can make them small and tiny and um, that's what makes our little chickens so fun okay so we're going to set these aside and now i'm going to show you how to make our sun catcher eggs and these are really easy and fun to do and they come in all everyone's going to be a little bit different again for this project, all you're going to need is some um, contact paper, some transparent adhesive um, shelf paper. You can pick this up at a big box store. You're going to want to cut it into um, six inch lengths, which is like these six blocks on here. And you're going to want to cut the whole length because you actually have to cut it a little bit in half. So you have two pieces. If you come to the Her Memorial Library to pick up this craft, we actually provide you with the two pieces already cut. All you'll have to do is trim them to fit. Um, then you're going to need some tissue paper again at the library we have sent you home with um, a rainbow of colored tissue paper that you can cut into the size strips that you want to go along with your um, your easter eggs you can use all the colors or some of the colors however you prefer to do it as you can see for our sample ones we made rainbows and like i said you want to cut all these up into strips of colored paper the last things that you're going to need is an egg template you can print these off online for free or just freehand draw them we did ours um, as a four print template um, but you can do as many of these as you like um, just remember that if you do more you're going to need more of the adhesive transparent paper and you're also going to need a lot of ribbon you're going to need a long length of ribbon so that you can cut it up into um, lengths for the hook so let me show you how to get this started the first thing you have to do and this is probably the hardest part of this craft is taking the backing off of your contact paper and there we go and then you want to be a little careful here especially if you're doing this with your younger kids that they don't make a mess of it but you want to lay it with the adhesive side up the sticky side up and then you just want to take your tissue paper and you want to start designing what you want it your 
your eggs to look like. And you want to start like at the bottom and just lay the tissue paper strips across. So maybe we want to do like a pattern of pink and purple. Maybe we want to do this on the bottom here and we could do uh, maybe a little bit of yellow in here. So that would be kind of pretty. And then we could do like another purple. And then we did red. So this can help your kids learn how to do patterns. Um, it also helps with the fine motor skill coordination. Because you have to lay things out and get them even. And then we'll do another yellow here. And then maybe we'll change gears. Maybe our, our eggs at the top will be a slightly different color. Maybe at this point we'll switch over to green. And we'll do green and blue and orange maybe. Or like you can see in our craft sample, we did a rainbow. So you could do the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. You could do um, the pink and then the purple. Um, oh, we forgot green. Oops. I can't talk and chew gum at the same time apparently. Okay, so we'll do green. And then another blue. Oh, it's starting to stick to everything. And then another orange. As you can see, I have plenty of tissue paper left over. Um, so you've got lots of options for decorating for this. Once you get your tissue paper completely covered, like so, now you have to get your other square of tissue paper and do the hard part again, which is separating the backing off of this one. It helps if you've got fingernails. And I know that there are tricks people have always told me, but I can never seem to remember them. Just be patient, it will come off. And then you want to make sure you line up this with the sticky side down this time, exactly the same shape. Don't turn it this way. You want to make sure you've got it completely covering and lined up and then lay it flat and then smooth it down and try not to have wrinkles because that will mess it up. And then if you do get a wrinkle in there, it's okay. You can kind of work them out a little bit, stretch it. And it's okay if you tear off little pieces on the edges because we're gonna trim all that anyways. Then you wanna take your template and you're gonna lay your template right on top, like so. And maybe what we wanna do here is then tape it to um, your tissue paper contact lens and your contact paper. Um, because we're going to actually cut these eggs out with it attached. And so this kind of keeps your paper from sliding off and not giving you a nice perfect circle. And when you cut these out, you just cut right through all the layers then. And just like this. And there we have an orange and green and yellow one. Isn't that cute? And then up here, we should have our pink one. So since it can be kind of hard to cut through all this, your little ones might need a little bit of assistance with the cutting part here. But it is a good resistance activity and it will help strengthen those fingers and muscles as we're using the scissors. So I would encourage you to keep your kids trying it. And there's a pink and purple and yellow one, aren't those cute? Now the last thing you need to do is to take the ribbon and you wanna cut it into um, about, oh, I don't know, four, four inches or so. You don't need to make it really long. You wanna make sure you have enough for all of your eggs. And then you wanna take your tape and just flip your eggs over and looping the ribbon together, just tape them very carefully to the top of your egg, like so. And there you have it. See how easy and simple that is? It can be a, a little bit of a lot of prep work, but they turn out really cute and your kids will love it. And um, they look really pretty in your windows. And the nice other thing too is that um, if you do this for next Easter, since this Easter is already passed, but if you do this for next Easter, if you do them early enough, you can put them outside in your trees um, because even if it rains, since they're covered in contact paper, unless it rains really, really hard, 
um, they'll hold up nicely for a little bit outside. So there's those. So that's always a fun craft to do too. Okay, and the last one we want to do is our little bit more complicated craft. And this one does require a little bit more work and a little bit more skill. And so um, this isn't always best for younger kids, but maybe for older kids, older elementary kids, or maybe you've got some teenagers that like to be really crafty. Um, and we're going to make these um, bunny eggs. And so the first step that you need to do is to get your eggs. And you can, as you can see, we've gotten white eggs and brown eggs, so it doesn't matter what kind of eggs you have. At home, if you've got brown ones, those work. If you've got white, that's fine too. Um, if you need to go buy some, you can go buy some. But don't just use a raw egg because this will spoil and get really gross and nasty. So what you need to do is either boil the eggs um, for about 10 minutes so that they're nice and cooked all the way through and then they're yummy to eat. Um, or you can do a little more complicated method of blowing the yolks out. And to do that, you need to wash the egg thoroughly, so any bacteria or dirt that's on the shell is washed off. And then you need to take like a sewing needle and poke a hole in the bottom of the egg and then poke a hole in the top of the egg. And then, <laughs> this is the fun part, holding it over a bowl, you need to blow as hard as you can through the hole to force all the yolk and the white out. Um, you don't want to have too big of a hole in the bottom because you lose all the shell. So you want to make sure that it is um, just a little bit of a pinprick. I blew these eggs out, so we'll see if you can't see that. Can you see the hole in there? Let's see if we can't zoom in. So the holes in these eggs, as you can see, aren't too huge. And they're big enough to blow, and they're extremely lightweight now because there's nothing inside of them um, compared to a regular egg. It can take a few minutes to get all that out and it takes a lot of air pressure so if you don't have um, strong lungs if you're suffering with respiratory issues I don't recommend blowing the eggs out it can cause lightheadedness and dizziness so just to get with boiled eggs is fine if you blow the eggs out though they will last a very long time the hard-boiled eggs will need to be refrigerated after you've decorated them so that's just something to keep in mind once you've either boiled your eggs or blown them out you can make them to be either their plain color or you can dye them. Now, true confession, I've never actually dyed eggs with my kids. I'm a terrible mom. Ha, 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 ha. We just never wanted to deal with the mess. But it really isn't that hard to do. You just need a cup of boiling water, um, two tablespoons of vinegar, and food coloring. And then just take your hard-boiled egg um, or your blown-out egg, whichever you prefer, and dip it into the dye and let it sit for as long as you want. The longer it sits, the darker the color, the brighter the color. This is a neon pink food coloring that we did. And let me show you, I wasn't paying attention. And look how bright my egg got. So our bunny here is gonna look a little sunburned, but that's okay. The other eggs we did not dye. We just went ahead and left them their full color. So that's something to keep in mind. So make sure when you dye your eggs that you're paying attention and that you don't um, let them sit too long. You can see in here too, I blew these eggs also out. So that gives you an idea as to what the holes in these also look like. And then again on the top. This method does preserve your eggs for quite some time. Okay, so then the only other thing that you're going to need, and if, again, if you come down to our library, we provide you with everything but the eggs and the markers. You're going to need, um, uh, some green green cardstock or construction paper um, you're gonna I think we gave you guys a couple I think we gave you enough for four or we gave you two strips that you'll have to cut in half so you have four strips um, you're going to need um, your pom-poms for the tails of your bunny you're going to need pieces of felt we went with white and brown and pink to make the ears you're going to need um, pink paint for the nose you're going to need a Sharpie marker to make the eyes and a paintbrush to paint with. So the first step you have to do is to take your paper and you want to fringe the edges so that it ends up looking like this. And then you're going to want to take your tape, which you also need, and you want to curl these just like that and secure with tape. This is what makes your grassy nest for your bunny to rest in. And then you just kind of want to pull your fringes back a little bit. You can even 
smoosh it down on the table if you want, and that makes your grassy nests. So we have three grassy nests here, one for each egg that I made. Um, just an FYI, these would be adorable tabletop um, name tags for Easter dinners. So if you want to stick it for next year, that's a good idea too. So then the next step is to make the ears. And I recommend using fabric scissors with felt because it can be really difficult to cut. And what you want to do is take your felt square and you just want to cut like a triangle at the top and a triangle here. And then just come down along the sides and make it kind of wide at the bottom. And come up here again and kind of make it wider at the bottom at the bottom and pointer at the top and make a couple of ears. So we've got all of our ears made for all of our bunnies and we'll move these out of the way and we have our grass all prepped and ready to go. So all we need now are our eggs and what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and decorate our white egg so you can see it the best and you want to take a hot glue gun and this is where we want you guys to be really, really careful and not hurt yourselves. And you want to take just a little bit of glue and apply it to the ear and then apply it to the back of the egg, like so. And then take your other ear, a little bit of glue and apply it to the back of the egg, just like so. Now you can use your craft glue for this also it will just take much longer to dry, which is why I like the glue gun. Then, turning your egg over, go ahead and glue that pom-pom on for his tail. Then we're going to turn him back over one more time. And with our marker, we're going to draw some eyes on our little egg here. And you can make them any expression you want. Be as creative if you like. Give them kind of a curious look, or um, maybe you want to even give them a little bit of eyelashes. And then you want to remember you're gonna put a pink nose in here. So then the mouth is just gonna come down below where the nose would be, and you're just gonna make a couple J's, one backwards, one forwards, and then we just put a couple dots for whiskers, like so. Now you need to get out your pink paint, which we also at the library do not provide. So if you've got a pink marker, you can use that instead. Oops. And I'm gonna pour a little bit of pink paint in my cap here because we don't need hardly any. And just a drop for our bunny's nose. Just like that. And there you have your little pink bunny for his nest. And you can just set him in his nest. And there you are. And you can do the same with your other eggs. So you'll have a pink bunny, a very sunburned pink bunny, and our cute little brown bunny. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed our crafts today, and I wish you all a very happy Easter, and enjoy your beautiful spring. See you, goodbye.